Could you bring me a little stool and the, the keyboard, which is in the window? Yeah. The electric keyboard. Muchas gracias. Hi Krishna. Good morning, dear devotees from Sri Jagannath Puri Dham. My name is Madhavananda Das. And these are our adventures in Srimad Bhagavatam. This is session 86 that we're doing in a series we're calling Meeting in Kurukshetra. And today we want to speak something about, something more about the purpose of separation and what uh, Krishna tells the gopis in the Brahma Gita in the 47th chapter of the 10th canto. So we'll have a few prayers to begin with. Narayanam namaskrit jam naram shchavanarotamam devim sarasvatim vyasam sato jayam hudirayat veli ramayane shchava purane bharate tata adavante chamadhi chahari sarvatrigi hate mukam karadi vachalam bhangum langayate girim Yet kripa tamaham vande shri gurum dina tadhanam paramananda madhavam paramananda he madhava padunga luchi makaranda se makaranda panakari anande bolo hari hari Harinka name vanda vela, pari kori be chakadola. Se chakadolanka padaye, manamorahu nirantare, manamorahu nirantare rahu, ha Krishna boli jiva jau. A Krishna boli jau jiva mote udara radha dava mote udara radha dava mote udara radha dava dharma projita kaita vota paramonya matsanam satam vedyam vastava matta vastu shivadam Tapa Trayon Mulanam, Srimad Bhagavate Mahamune Krite Kim Vapara Ishvara, Sadyo Hridyava Rudyate Tukuti Bishu Shu Shu Bistakshana, Nagamako Pataro Galitam Falam Shukamukada Mitra Dravasam Yutam, Pibata Bhagavatam Rasamalayam Mohura Ho Rasika Bhuvi Babuka, Anarto pasamam sakshad bhakti yoga madhoksaje loka shajanito vidvams chakri satvata samhitam yasham vaishyamanayam krishne paramapurushe bhakti rupadite pumsa shoka moha bhayapaha shimad bhagavatam paranamamalam yad vaishnavanam priyam Yasmin paramahamsa mekam amalam jnanam padam giyate tatra jnana vairagya bhakti sahitam naiskarm yama viskritam tach chen van supaten vicharana paro bhaktya vimuchen naraha arto yam brahma sutra nam bharatarta vinyunaya gayatri bhasya rupo so vedarta padudramitaha Sarva Vede Tihasanam Sadam Sadam Samudritam Sarva Vedanta Sadam He Srimad Bhagavatam Ishyate Tadrasamrita Tipta Shyanan Yatya Svaduchi Kuchit Krishna Bhakti Rasasradu Shri Bhagavata Tate Veda Shastra Hoite Paramamahadva Chari Veda Upanishade Jatakichu Hoya Tara Arta Lanavyasa Korila Sanchaya Jesu Jeje Ruk 
Chapter 47. Uh, today we'll be speaking, I think, on probably a few verses, perhaps text number uh, 35 to 36. We'd like to repeat a prayer. This is written by Jiva Goswami in his uh, commentary on the first verse of the 46th chapter of the 10th canto. Artaika sadhanam krishnam artan brajajanam chitam tam chitarsvasvakam bhaktam archavande durasaya In sorrow, with a hopeless heart, I offer respects to Krishna, who is the only shelter for those suffering, to the suffering people of Braj. And I offer obeisances to Uddhava, who alleviated their suffering. So, going on to text number uh, 35. Yatadura chade preste mana avishya vartate strinam chana tata chetaha sani krishte kshira gochare. Translation When her lover is far away, a woman thinks of him more than when he is present before her. There's no BBT purport for this, but Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur and Sarta Darshani, he explains that this verse uh, speaks about the relative importance of feeling with the heart and seeing with the eyes. And uh, Jiva Goswami describes in his uh, Logo Vaishnav Toshani that there's a conversation contained in this verse between Krishna and the gopis. And Krishna, in effect, he's telling the gopis by speaking this through Uddhava, that your love is perfect. Mm -hmm. That let your thoughts be upon me. So, and then the gopis say, but what about us? In response to Krishna's comment. Mm -hmm. And Krishna bows his head and tells the gopis that your love is greater than mine. Mm -hmm. In Gopal Champu, Jiva Goswami speaks further about this. And he says that the gopis, uh, they're thinking to themselves, uh, what is Krishna saying? Nana yoganga ivedam upadishyate. Uh, that Krishna is giving some kind of upadesh, some kind of instructions. And what is he saying? Nana yogangam. He's teaching us about yoga. Uh, uh, and this yoga, touch chatra mano nirodha lakshanam. This yoga attempts to stop all different mental fu functions. Uh -huh. So the gopis then tatkim svasman mano nirodham upadishtam itikshanam vibhavya 
vidi vicharitam nahi nahi yataha. The gopis, and they started to contemplate. At first they were thinking that Krishna is telling us that we should try to control our minds. And then they heard it a second time. Uh, and they thought, oh, actually that's not what Krishna's trying to tell us. Uh, because they remembered a previous discussion they had with Krishna, which appears in the 14th chapter of the 10th canto. Pureha bhuman bahava piyoginas tvad arpita sunija kama labdaya vibhudya bhakyaeva katopanitaya prapedire nyo the gopis previously they told Krishna, our dear Lord, eh, Bhuman, they addressed him as a powerful Lord. Eh. In the past, many, many yogis, eh, api yoginaha, eh, many different yogis, twat arpita iha nijakarma labdhaya, they offered all their endeavors to you, they, they carried out all the prescribed duties, uh, and they were doing hearing and chanting, and they came to understand you, and then they could uh, easily surrender to you and achieve your abode. Uh, so, this is actually this verse is spoken by Lord Brahma, and Lord Brahma is speaking about uh, he's addressing Krishna that there's so many people who practice bhakti. Vishnu explains that the word yoginaha there means actually bhakti. Sometimes people, they complain about Srila Prabhupada's translations, both in the Gita and sometimes in the Bhagavatam, when Prabhupada sometimes speaks about yoga as bhakti. And they, they say this is unprecedented, it's not a proper translation, but Prabhupada's following our previous acharyas, such as Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur and Jiva Goswami and others. Right? And uh, Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur, he says, but this verse can also be taken, the one we just read from the 14th chapter, this verse can also be taken as a rejection of the yoga process. Because in the previous two verses, the uh, Brahma rejected Gyan. So they're saying that after practicing for yoga for a long time, one may come to the platform of bhakti and attain firm devotion to Krishna. Therefore, uh, in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Srila Rupa Goswami describes it, Anyabhi Lasita Shunyam Jnana Karmadi Anabritam, that for the Sudha Bhakti to be there, uh, Anyabhi Lasa is rejected, and Jnana Karma Anabritam, Jnana Karmadi Adi Anabritam, that Jnana Karma shouldn't cover Bhakti. And we spoke quite a bit about this before. I won't go there again today. But looking back again at the 46th chapter of the 10th canto, when Krishna gives his instructions to Uddhava, he says, Gachotava Bajam Somya, my dear Somya Uddhava, my dear gentle Uddhava, uh -huh. you go to uh, Braj and Sunday Shai. Mm -hmm. Sunday Shai, as we've commented again and again, this means that you repeat my messages. It's not just Sunday show in, in a singular way, but in the grammar, in the Sanskrit grammar, it's plural. So Krishna, in effect, is telling him that, that there's one message, but you should repeat it again and again and again and again. And the gopis, they're hearing this and they're understanding it again and again in different ways. So looking back in Gopal Champu again, Jiva Goswami saying that, that uh, the gopis, they were remembering this verse in the 14th chapter when Krishna spoke this through Uddhava, and they're trying to figure out what in the world is he trying to tell us. Uh, and they remembered that, that Lord Brahma spoke this thing, and in that verse, yoga is rejected. Uh, and so the gopis, they thought that iti tashaiva he ayatvam drishyate, uh, Tato viraha bhavad mano nirodham that Krishna is speaking about the meditation to stop the mind from thinking about separation. That's the reason why Krishna is saying this. They're trying to understand Krishna's message. And this is uh, indirectly anveya vyati reka vyam yat syat sarvati sarvati. The Bhagavatam speaks of both a direct message and an indirect 
message. When someone who's very deep speaks to us, we should try to understand not just the direct message, but the indirect message. Sometimes I've seen with great Vaishnavas, I our Sikhs of Guru Fakir Mahabhu, sometimes he would chastise me in a very brutal way, praising me. And he would say, in front of everybody, and this is someone who has dozens of PhD students under him, he's one of the greatest scholars in Gaudiya Vaishnavism and in Arisa in decades, and he would tell everybody, Madhavananda is a big pundit. He knows so many things, and I, I don't know anything. So in that way, he's chastising me through words of praise. Right? So the gopis, they're trying to understand what Krishna is saying. Right? So the second time, first time that they, they think, what the heck, what is he saying? That we should practice yoga and meditation. Nonsense. And then again, they think, oh, they hear Uddhava speak it again. Now we understand. Krishna is speaking about this meditation uh, that we should stop the mind from thinking about separation. But then they hear it a third time. Uh, and Uddhava is repeating all these verses three times in a row. Uh. So the first time they thought in their, in their hearts, uh, the gopis are thinking that Krishna is saying to them that the reason why I'm far away from your eyes, even though I love you, is that I have a desire that you meditate on me continuously uh, because there's no possibility of you seeing me directly. And in that situation, your minds will be absorbed in me just like a woman thinks of a man when he's far away. Uh, and it also means that I, I'm absorbed uh, in you even though I'm far away. And so then the gopis, they think, oh, so he's wanting us to absorb our minds in him rather than preventing our minds from doing so. Uh, why is he teaching like this, the gopis are thinking? Because yugaitam nimeshena, chakshisha prabhishaitam, shunyaitam jagat sarvam govinda vidahinami. That without Krishna's association, even one moment seems like a, like a hundred yugas. Uh, and what is he saying? Weren't we already absorbed in thinking of him? Why is he telling us to think about him? And then, Puna Dvitiye, Jiva Goswami says, Ya idam mananam vishakritam. They think about the second time. Oh, oh, am am manasasani karishartam. The, the real meaning is uh, that Krishna is saying, that because of thinking me with your minds, then, Sani uh, I'll become visible to you. That's why Krishna's saying it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And Krishna's telling them, Jiva Goswami says, that I'm going to directly appear in two ways. First, I'm going to enter into the mind uh, uh, through the eye, like in the waking state. Uh -huh. And this direct sight by the eye is inferred chiefly by the mind as in the dream state. And we spoke something about that in previous verses. Mm -hmm. So Krishna says, while in Braj, while I was there in Braj, I appeared in that first way, and now I'm in Mathura, I'm there in the second way. Right? In Braj, I'm there directly before you, and now in Mathura, I'm there in your dreams. And that's also direct. I, I, it's it's non-different. Mm -hmm. And Krishna is telling them, Jiva Goswami says, that when the mind produces that image, it's like a dream, but actually it's not really a dream. Rather, it's my direct spirit that you're directly seeing me. And Krishna says that because I'm embarrassed by my elders, I can't directly uh, speak about our relationship in front of my elders, and because I'm, I'm embarrassed by them, then visibly I've gone far away. This is one explanation Krishna's giving them. This is why I've gone away, because I can't associate with you directly in front of my elders. I, I'm a little embarrassed by that. And therefore, that is so, my association with you should be hidden. And for this reason, I've done this. And you should be satisfied with my spurti. And seeing that spurti, that's one way that it stops the mind from th thinking previously about separation, which is a previous thing that Krishna was telling him. So this separation, we I'd like to address this a little bit today. I find even devotees sometimes, that they hear about this and they think this is very strange. And there's some controversy too about it. 
And some devotees who, who uh, those of us who uh, like to quarrel about things, we find some justification. Yes, our, on our side of the camp, in our camp, we, uh, we, we say that, that uh, separation is the highest thing. And then some other people say, no, that union is the highest thing. But both can be said. It depends on the perspective that someone is saying it. Our purpose is Gaudiya Vaishnavas. We're following Rupa Manjari in the form of Rupa Goswami. And Rupa Manjari, what is her service? Is her service to send Krishna away from Braj so that Radharani can't see him again? No. Her service is to bring about Milan or to bring about union. And that's the, the life and soul of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas who are following Rupa Goswami. That, that's the meaning of being a Rupa Nuga. We want to bring about union with Radha and Krishna. But that union, paradoxically, is more intensely felt in separation than it is in direct union. So both things are true. Separation is the highest, but at the same time, our purpose is union, because union is the highest. And therefore, in the four states of separation and in the four states of union, the last limit, the highest thing, is known as samridhi man sambhog. Sambhog is union, and samridhi man means fully enriched union. And that takes place after sudura prabhas, after the, the, the last limit of the highest type of separation. And therefore, Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur he explains that in the very word viraha, viraha means two things. V means vishesh, means vishesh rupa, special form. Special form of what? Hmm? Raha, viraha, raha means rahasya milan, or a confidential, mysterious union. This is what viraha means. And prior to the time of, of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who could understand this? Who could understand this Brahma Ragit and, and, and the purpose of why Krishna is, is uh, leaving Braj? What in the world is he telling the gopis? Huh? Even we see in ISKCON, amongst common devotees, if someone starts teaching yoga classes, and so many devotees, they come and they criticize. This is not proper. We shouldn't be doing that. And there's a reason why they say that. Because the gopis of Braj, they reject yoga. We're not interested in yoga. But at the same time, the bodhis sometimes find it good. I find it a mean to preach. Just like Srila Prabhupada, you know, one of the first uh, things that Srila Prabhupada did in America, he started Sanskrit classes. Because some of the persons who were coming to hear from him, Mukunda, later Maharaj, and others, they were requesting, could you please teach us Sanskrit? And so Prabhupada started doing Sanskrit classes to, to attract people to bhakti. But later he dropped that. He saw that it wasn't necessary I'd to have that pretense. Let me just speak directly about Krishna. Mm -hmm. So, uh, speaking about the separation. The separation is the life and soul of the devotees. Again, in Priti Sandarbha, Jiva Goswami gives another meaning. We, we've given a meaning here of, of viraha. And Jiva Goswami gives a similar meaning of the word vipralamba. And he says, vipralambo viprakarshena lamba praptir yashisa tata. That vipralamba means lamba, attainment, of something from a distance, vipra. Uh -huh. And the gopis, uh, they're promised to by Krishna. Krishna tells them in the same chapter later on, in the 29th verse of this 47th chapter, he says, Bhavati nam viyogo me nahi savatmana kvachit, that you're never actually separated from me. There's no question of it. Externally, it appears like there's separation, but internally, it's, it's actually union. Jiva Goswami in Gopal Champu, uh, in the 33rd chapter of the Purva, uh, Vibhav of the Gopal Champu, he says that those persons who are, are participating in the Prakat pastimes, they're not aware of it. In, in Krishna's manifest pastimes, they're not aware of that separation. Uh -huh. And he says that if in those Prakat pastimes Krishna were to appear secretly at some time in Braj, uh -huh, this wouldn't create faith in those persons who have a strong longing. Uh -huh. Because that temporary manifestation, if Krishna had gone to, to Mathura, 
doing the Prakat manifestation, and sometimes he appears secretly, then uh, it would just create some disturbance at them. And they, they, they would think, oh, this is, I'm just having some illusion. Huh? And therefore, we hear so much about the uh, Dibyon Mada, Vashimati Radharani. Dibyon Mada is the name of a book which we just recently has finished getting translated. We have to add some commentary to it. Uh, Dibya Mata refers to the divine madness of Srimati Radharani, which is a very famous topic we also hear about in the Anjalila of Chaitanya Charitamrita and Mahaprabhu's feelings and how he's experiencing the same feelings of madness as Srimati Radharani is experiencing. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's go on to the next verse, again in the 47th chapter. Mm -hmm. We just heard text 35, next one and 36. Krishna's tells to the gopis, Myaya Vesya Mana Krishnam Vimukta Ksesa Vrityat Anus Maryantayo Mam Nityam Achiran Mam Upaishyata. Krishna tells the gopis in one meaning, because your minds are totally absorbed in me, and your minds are free from all other engagement, then you're going to remember me always. Uh -huh. He says that Anus Marantya Mam Nityam, you'll always remember me. And then very soon you'll attain me, you'll get me in your presence. Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur he says that the gopis are telling Uddhava, Uddhava, this message uh, you should keep in the treasure box uh, of your heart. Uh, because now we know that Krishna, he's enjoying some of the ladies of Mathura. But sometime in the future, he's also going to leave them. He's going to go away from them. And at that time, then you can tell this to those ladies in Matura. Uh -huh. But right now, you're coming here to Braj, and you're trying to tell the Braj Gopikas this message, and it's not acceptable. Later, you can tell this to the ladies in Matura, uh -huh, that, that Krishna's going to appear before them again in the future, but we don't want to hear that. Uh -huh. Even when Krishna was present here before us and was visible before our eyes, and then suddenly he would disappear, as in the Ras Lila happened before, uh -huh. that moment felt like Yugai Tamnimishin. It felt like a, a hundred yugas, even though it was just one moment. Uh -huh. And each moment of that period of separation, uh -huh, we were drawing Krishna into our minds with so many different feelings of separation. So the gopis are speaking a little sarcastically to Uddhava. And then Uddhava, Vishnu says, he replies, he says, my dear ladies, <clears throat> if this message doesn't appeal to you, if you don't like what I'm saying, huh, then listen again. Uddhava says, actually, I have a lot of messages. And so then Uddhava again repeated Krishna's words. And Krishna is telling them that, uh, Uddhava is speaking, Krishna is telling them the second time that you have completely rejected Vimukta household life in your family and your husbands and everything, and your, your minds are completely absorbed in me. This means that very soon you're going to attain my personal presence. Now Jiva Goswami in Lagva Vaishna Toshini he says that Krishna gave so many instructions, and now Krishna's thinking to himself, I've given different solutions to the gopis. I told them, first of all, that, uh, uh, that by thinking about me, they're not going to feel separation. And the second message I've given them is that, that, that by being absorbed in me, they're going to directly see me in some spurti in a dream, and that's real. And now, thirdly, I've told them that, that being completely absorbed to me, I'm going to return again later on. Uh -huh. I've given these three solutions, but the gopis, if they consider the, the unmanifest passion and not here, if they consider it carefully, then they're not going to be enthusiastic to control their minds and meditate on it. Uh -huh. So I have to create some solution in the Prakat manifestation. Uh -huh. And so, uh, so in this way, that uh, the gopis, they'll see that, that my uh, fickleness and leaving will be destroyed after time, after some time, by their insistence 
and seeing me again. And so then Krishna is speaking in this verse, in the next verse, he's repeating the word me several times. And he's saying that this refers to me directly and not any other form. And because your minds have given up all other different functions, you can't even think about your babies or your husbands or your cooking or any other things. You're completely absorbed in me. And I give shelter to those persons who take shelter of me. So by remembering my form, then very, very soon, you're going to attain that form of mine. And Sanatana Goswami and Brihad Vaishnava Toshini. We should hear these commentaries. Prabhupada says this several times in the Bhagavatam. It's important. Krishna is telling the gopis, excuse me, the gopis are speaking to Krishna that, okay, you're telling us that, uh, that uh, by meditating upon you that you're going to attain us very, very soon. Then that means you don't need to stay very long in Mathura. And you should come back right away. And Krishna says, yes, that's true. You're right. I can't argue with you. And now that we've accomplished that, and I've almost come, just now, I'm almost returning now. And you're going to attain me eternally very, very soon. And there won't be any more separation. Because all of this ultimately is indicating Gora Lila. This is the purport, this is the, the purpose of the 47th chapter of the 10th canto to explain the feelings that the gopis and Radharani are having in separation from Krishna. And these feelings are attained by Krishna himself in the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And we're hearing about this in the 14th chapter of the Anchalila and, and later chapters in the Anchalila. Mm-hmm. So Krishna's telling the gopis, Sanatana Goswami says, that your minds have given up all types of desires and very easily your minds have become absorbed in me. I've attracted your heart and by your remembrance of me, I've also become attracted to you and I've come here. So there's no need for you to practice any other type of meditation, any other type of process. So at this point now, I'd like to try to examine a little bit more about the feelings of separation and how these feelings of separation are, are both, how uh, separation is both the highest and how union is the highest. In the Brihad Bhagavatamrita, Sanatana Goswami speaking about the gopis of Vrindavan in separation from, from himself, he explains, Pradyadyapi prema kritat priyanam vicheda davana la vega tonata Santapa jatena dhanta shoka vishena gadham bhavatai the dukam. He says that my dear gopis, who are so priyanam, who are so very, very dear to me, vicheda davana la vega tonata, they're in a forest fire. A separation. Why the, the phrase forest fire is used, we, we, have, we say samsara dhava nalavita loka, there's this great forest fire. A forest fire indicates that there's some animal trapped in the forest because those are the dwellers in the forest. And it indicates that the fire is all around them and they don't know where to go. They don't see any solution. And they're burning alive, they're dying in that situation. And he says there in that situation, Santapa Jatena Duranta Shoka, the gopis, they're suffering so much. He says, but, Tatapi Samboga Sukad Apistuta, Sokopya Nebacha, Tamoma Noramaha, Pramoda Rasi Pranimata Druvam, Tatasparetad Rasi Kaika Vedyaha. He says, but in a very paradoxical way, that pain that they're suffering, tatapi samboga sukad apistuta, it's greater, uh, it's more glorious than when they directly meet me. And he says that you can't describe it. It's an ocean of ecstatic love. And he says only those persons who are rus, rus, uh, rasikaika, who are rasika practice, who are very, very rasik, who understand how to taste transcendental mellows, only they can appreciate it. And Sanatana Goswami, in his commentary on his, in his own verse of Brihad Bhagavatamrita, 
he explains, Brahmando nirva chastasmat apyadikatyena bhajanando nirva chataraha tatracha premanando nirva chatamaha tatrapi virahartha dvarajataha sanparamam anchakasta vishesha prapti parama maha nirva chatama ityartaha that in the uh, Upanishads, it said there that Brahmanando, that the bl bliss of Brahman, uh, it's nirvachas. You can't describe it. Uh, that Brahman is is so very very ecstatic. But when that Bra that Brahman becomes very very intense, it's known as bhajan. And that bliss of bhajan attracts even the mind of those persons who are tasting or tasting that Brahmananda. And then when that bhajananda becomes very, very intense, that's called premananda. And that's the most indescribable thing. But then when that premananda comes to, the, to the, its limits of ecstatic separation, that's the ultimate thing which cannot be described. So this is such an indescribable thing. So that pain of separation, Jiva Sanatana Goswami further explains, it appears like misery, but actually it's the highest transcendental bliss. But again, it's not something that is wanted. And so then Sanatana Goswami gives another example. Yatagni pratiyogi gana himadi sparsena. That you take a block of ice and you touch that block of ice. It, it burns the hand. It, it, it feels like, like it's very, very hot. But it, actually, it's cold. Uh -huh. So it, it feels like you're touching fire, he says. But that fire, the feeling of fire, is just in your imagination. Because actually, the substance is very cold. So in the same way, a devotee, when he's feeling separation, the feelings of pain that he's feeling are actually just imagination. It's not actual. But in actuality, uh, mityatvam, it's just some, it's a lie, it's not really true, but eva sukha shaiva satyatvam vijayam. You should know vijayam, that in such in truth, it's sukha shaiva. It's the highest happiness. Mm -hmm. Rupa Goswami says a similar thing in Padyavali. He gives a verse spoken by Shimati Radharani. Radharani says, Sangama viraha vikalpe varam iha viraho na sangamas tasyaha sangi saiva tataika tibuvanam api tanmayam virahe. Radharani says that when I consider the difference between union and separation, I think that separation is better. This is Radharani's words. I think that separation is better because when I'm directly with Krishna, I only see him one time. But in separation, I see Krishna everywhere. This is the mood of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And this is why uh, Sri Rupa Goswami has given this in his Padyavali. Although he's not directly speaking about Garanga Mahaprabhu, he's helping us to understand the mood of Garanga Mahaprabhu. And therefore, Prabhupada, he's written things like in Chaitanya Charitamrita in uh, uh, purport in Majjalila, chapter 4, he says, Krishna can be felt, Krishna can be present more acutely in separation. When Krishna is absent physically, he'll be more present within the mind of the devotee. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teaching is Vipralamba Seva. Uh, and Prabhupada says, worship in separation is considered by the Gaudiya, Gaudiya Madhva Sampradaya to be the topmost level of devotional service. So this is what Krishna is telling the gopis, that I'm putting you in separation, but in that separation, the woman thinks of the man more deeply, and there's more union there. Again, in another purport, in Adi Lila Prabhupada says that separation excels the feeling of meeting Krishna. So this separation is the topmost thing, but it's not something which is wanted. This separation is, uh, to experience this, Krishna has personally come as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And we're hearing, and, and last night we were reading in, in, in Anchilu chapter 14, how he's experiencing the same mood, 
the same feelings of separation the gopis are feeling in that 47th chapter in Brahmaragate, the 47th chapter of the 10th canto. To help us to understand those feelings, in our Gaudiya line, we have a connection with Gurudev and with the Vaishnavas. In the uh, Bhakti Ratnakar, in chapter 10 of Bhakti Ratnakar, Narhari Chakravarti Thakur, he describes how uh, Narottam Das Thakur was once doing kirtan. And in that kirtan, suddenly the Panchatattva, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and all his associates and the devotees, they all appeared. Devotees like Mukunda and like Haridas Thakur and Gadadhar Pandit and others. And then suddenly Chaitanya Mahaprabhu disappeared. And at that time, uh, he describes the, the words of the kirtan of Narottam Das Thakur. Keha kahed kota gela prabhu gora chandra Keha kahe kota shri advaita nityananda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Keha Kahi said, Kota Gela, where is Prabhu Gorachandra? Where is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Kota Sri Advaita Nityananda, where is Advaita Nityananda? Keha Kohe Kota Sri Pandita Gadadhar. Keha Kahe Kota Hari Dasa Vakreshwara Keha Kahe Kota Gela Shivas Murari Keha Kahe Kota Shri Mukunda Narahari Keha Kahe Kota Gauri Dasa Gadadha Keha Kahe Kota Shri Shri Dhanoda Keha Kahe Ganasaha Prabhu Deka Diya Koha Gaya Bali Khande Bhumi Latahiya Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Perfect timing, we just finished. <laughs> that Nansam Das Thakur and all the devotees there began to cry so intensely. So they, they experienced union. It was an amazing kirtan. Nansam Das Thakur started singing. And, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu directly appeared, and the devotees were like, wow, this is really good. <laughs> this is the real deal. And they directly saw Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, even as described by Narahari Chakravarti Thakur, that there were some atheists who were present there who had come to make fun of the devotees. Huh? You know, those Hare Krishna people, they're coming and doing their kirtan. And those atheists also saw Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And they became completely astonished, and they quit making fun of the devotees. <laughs> so we don't mind if people want to come and make fun of us. As we spoke previously in one uh, Islamic country, the devotees told me they were sending spies. We spoke at a Sunday feast program. They said, we don't mind spies. Send more spies. We like spies. <laughs> we don't have anything to hide. So when suddenly Gauranga Mahaprabhu and all his associates disappeared, this is in the kirtan, uh, an amazing kirtan. Mahaprabhu is appearing, but then he's disappearing. Then what happened to the devotees? The ecstasy of that kirtan increased thousands of times over. And externally, it looked like they were experiencing the, the most intense pain that we could imagine. But internally, there was union, and there was the greatest ecstasy. And they began rolling on the ground. Bumi Lotai means they're rolling on the ground and crying and crying. When are we going to see again these associates of Garanga Mahaprabhu? And present there also were uh, those atheists. And those atheists, they were also crying. So our Acharyas repeatedly, they speak about the importance of separation. And separation also from the devotees and how that separation from the devotees will help us to understand separation from Krishna. Just like one of one Prabhupada disciple, friend of our Guru Maharaj, he once asked Guru Maharaj, he said that, Guru Maharaj, you speak so much about the importance of crying and separation from Krishna. How can we experience that? And Guru Maharaj told him something which he couldn't really understand at the time. He said, after I leave this world, then you'll understand, then you'll be able to cry. So just as Krishna has put the gopis in different types of separation, 
And one of those four types of separation is known as prabhas, or from a distance when Krishna goes to Kamyavan or some different uh, forest during the day. But again, they see him at the end of the day. So similarly, we don't see Gurudev sometimes because he's preaching in some other country, but we'll see him again after a few months. That's Dura Prabhas. But then there's Sudura Prabhas, which is when Gurudev has left this world and we don't know if we're going to see him again or not. So uh, Raghunath Das Goswami, he's uh, described uh, the feelings of separation due to that he was experiencing in separation from uh, Rupa Goswami and from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he said a very interesting thing, Sunyayate Maha Goshtam, Girindra Jagarayate Vyagra Tundayate Kundam Jivatu Rahitashyame. Now that I no longer have this personality, what's happened with Braj? What has Braj become? Sunyayate Mahagosam. Everything has become empty. Girindra Jagarayate. Now Govardhan Hill has become like a great snake, a great python, which is coming to swallow me. Vyagra Tundayate Kundam. And Radha Kund has become like the open mouth of a great tiger. It's going to eat me. So we think that, that, that Braj is just a place of happy feelings for the devotees. And, but this is the experience of the followers of Garanga Mahaprabhu in separation. That same place, which is the most delightful, wonderful place of union, suddenly becomes a terrible place. Sunyayate Maha Goshtam, everything is, is empty there. Girindo Jagadayate and Giriraj Govardhan has become like a great snake that's going to swallow me. Vyagatundayate Kundam and Radhakund has become like, like, like the open mouth of a tiger which is going to uh, kill me. So we should understand something about these feelings of separation at least in a theoretical way. Because as Krishna says in the Gita, hmm, Raja Vidya, this is the topmost knowledge, Raja Guyam is the most confidential, but Pratyak Savagamam Dharmyam, it's meant to be practically experienced. So there's no meaning to two small children who pick up a book from their older brother and, and it says something which they can't figure out. It says E and there's an equal sign and there's a letter M and little C and two. And they, what the heck is this, man? It doesn't mean anything. They have some conversation like that. So what does it mean for devotees to have quarrels trying to say which is higher, union or separation? We should experience that thing. And that thing, as Sanatana Goswami is saying in his commentary in Brihad Bhagavatamrita, it's indescribable. And therefore, Uddhava again and again, he's speaking the same thing to the gopis, and the gopis again and again are understanding it in different ways. And Krishna is telling them that, that although externally it appears like separation, but internally there's union. The purpose of our Gaudiya Kirtan is to experience Kirtan in separation. And this is why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes here to Jagannath Puri and opens up this Jagannath Puri University of Braj Prem. This is the meaning of the meeting in Kurukshetra. This is the meaning of the Brahma Ragit that Mahaprabhu has experienced. We should learn something about kirtan or, or uh, kirtan and separation. Therefore, Prabhupada wrote a letter in 1968. This is a very, very early letter you know, to Asham, one of his disciples. Uh, and Prabhupada said, Our business is to chant and glorify the holy name of Krishna. And wherever we may remain, Krishna is with us. Krishna is within your heart. Krishna is within my heart. So spiritually, there's no question of separation. Even physically, we may be in a far distant place. So in another letter, Prabhupada said, you're doing kirtan there, I'm doing kirtan here. So there's some union in that kirtan. And we should understand this in a very deep way. For persons who are just attached to dharma, artha, kama, moksha, it's very, very hard to understand these principles. For someone who's doing bhajan because I want to make advancement, because I want to get perfection, I want to get liberation, I want to go back to Godhead, they can't understand 
these feelings of separation. But this kirtan of separation, this is the kirtan of our sampradaya, trying to understand the feelings of the gopis in Braj and trying to help Krishna to experience those feelings. So I'm going to go ahead and stop there. And I want to thank all the devotees who are online, like Gorni Thai Prabhu in Hungary and, and Vinda Sundari in uh, Denver. There's a lot of technical things today in this subject matter. We're going to go on in our discussion. We're going to hear something about what the gopis tell Uddhava. Okay, we heard your message. Now we have a message to give to Krishna. And listen to this. And what the gopis have to reply to Krishna. It's a very technical kind of thing today. I'm a little sorry, but... I felt some necessity we should understand what it, what, what, why it is that, that separation is said to be the highest and then other times why union is said to be the highest and how both can be true. So I'm going to go ahead and stop there. If anybody has any reflections or comments or anything, on a piney rod, do you want to... And you speak real loud and the mic can pick you up, I think. Thank you so much for this lecture, this Katha. Uh, was really happy to be reminded how this 47th chapter is connected with Gora Lila. It's, it's a very special chapter. And also I was surprised to hear how Radharani herself speaking that separation is higher. <laughs> that's, that's really interesting. And also about Raghunath Das Goswami, you were speaking at the end, was really interesting that he, in separation, would he see Giraj as a snake and rather Kund as a mouse of a tiger. This was like really <laughs> unexpected. Uh, can you please uh, remind again where is it from, this uh, description of Raghunath Das Goswami and rather Rani speaking about uh, separation? That is from Raghunath Das Goswami's... Um, you said Sorry? You said Padyavali. Rupa Goswami is writing in Padyavali. Uh, let me... I, Oh, it's not Raghunath Das Goswami? Raghunath Das Goswami is writing this as other thing. Let me just check it real quick. I'll tell you. It's uh, from Raghunath Das Goswami's um, Vilap Kusumanjali. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that. He's speaking about that when he's experienced separation from Krishna or from whom? He's speaking that in separation from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh -huh. and from Rupa Goswami. Uh -huh. um, and we should understand this thing also. And this is why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is coming. One reason he's coming here to Puri is to teach us. He's coming for two reasons. Uh, as Gurunga Mahaprabhu's pastimes are there for, for Loka Siksha to teach everyone, but he's also coming to relish. So one purpose is to teach us about the importance of separation and the value of it and how we're trying to bring about union through kirtan. And this is what, what the gopis are doing for Radharani. When she's feeling separation, they're coming and doing kirtan so she can feel some union. And this is what uh, Krishna himself wants to taste in the form of uh, this kirtan. Brinda Sundar has commented also, she says, I appreciate how both can be true. It seems that both are only true when both exist. Mm -hmm. yeah, so there's no cause for a quarrel. Mm -hmm. I, I, in Gaudi Vaishnavism, why quarrel about things? If somebody doesn't like what you're saying and doesn't agree with you, fine. <laughs> have a good day. That's no problem. But I have my particular mood that we want to experience. And it's only when we feel unsure about our own situation, maybe even unsure about our Guru Dev, or unsure about the bhajan that we're doing, that we feel the necessity of arguing with other people. But when we're satisfied with that, then it's just fine. There's no problem. Anybody else with any reflections or anything? Jai Gaur? Want to spin that around? And here's Jai Gaur to Chan. Um, I was finding it really interesting that, that Krishna is being kind of so transparent with the gopis in a way. Like saying that like, I'm doing this to put you into separation, almost. Like, it kind of struck me as like, like in, in uh, you know, plays or, or shows or something like, you know, they say not to break the fourth wall. It's almost like he's breaking the fourth wall in some kind of way because we, we, we like, we... Can you explain what, is, what do you mean by breaking the fourth wall? Like, like um, you know, there's characters in a, in a drama or something and then they, um, they, they turn around and address the audience or something like that. And so it's it, it kind of like 
breaks the thing that's going on. You know, there's like a certain illusion. Kind yeah. Of this reality. So we kind of like, um, you know, analyze the, the, the past times and understand them in this way. Like, you know, Krishna is doing this to put the gopis into separation because he has to repay them. And so he's trying to spread their glories and all this kind of stuff. And he's, he's kind of explaining that directly to them. So I, I thought that was kind of far out. Yeah. I, I think also an aspect of that, another aspect of this too, is that Krishna understands, I can't argue. <laughs> with the gopis. Mm. As Jiva Goswami describes in Gopal Champa when Krishna is speaking to the gopis, that yes, it's true, I left. I'm here in Mathura. <laughs> in other words, I, you know, I, I, I can't, I'm, I'm not going to just try to give you some arguments. Actually, I'm really with you. There's no separation. No, no, I, I acknowledge. And because by doing that, it's not just a mental thing that he's acknowledging. He's acknowledging the pain in the heart of the gopis. And he has to. If he doesn't acknowledge that pain, how can he I, I reciprocate properly with him? Gorni Taipur will have some comment. He says, uh, Dear Madhananda Prabhu, thank you very much. Today I felt that I understand a nutshell about the method of Lord Chaitanya, how he inspires us sadhaks to be brave and go deeply into Harinam Sankirtan. I have a lot of questions, so I put them here. And what are the questions, he says? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram. Ram Ram Hari Hari, which includes all my questions. <laughs> Good questions, Gordon Tyler. Okay, anybody else? Anything? So I'm going to go ahead and stop there, and we'll be back again. I think next week. Actually, I'm not sure what's happening next week, but I think we will be. Uh, we'll write something on Facebook. Wherever. So thank you all very much. Grantada Shimad Bhagavatam ki jai, samabeda bhakti binda ki jai, gopreemanandi hari hari. Bunch of copper, the rubbish chunk, the